My name is Anthony and welcome to Vibe with Velo. Today I want to show you how to use multi-reference fields in your content collections, kind of what they are, when you would use them, just explain pretty much how they work and then show you how to use them uh, in your code, how to query for them, how to insert them. There's also a few other things you could do with multi-reference fields, but I feel once you've gotten these basics down, the rest will come naturally. So first, what are multi-reference fields? I'm going to give two different types of explanations. First, I'm going to give you the technical explanation, and then we'll go over the example project that I've built and kind of help you make sense of what of, uh, of multi-reference fields, and hopefully by then it clicks. So first, what are they? Uh, multi-reference fields essentially represent what's called a one-to-many relationship. So it's creating this relationship between two different content collections. Uh, if you've seen the video from Joshua about reference fields, this is actually fairly similar. In Joshua's case, they were one-to-one. -one. You were making a relationship between one row in one content collection and one row in another content collection. What you're doing now with multi-reference fields is one-to-many, so you're creating a relationship between one row in one content collection and many rows in another content collection. So one or more rows. So I hope that wasn't too confusing, but now let's actually take a look at the website itself to kind of help solidify uh, what's meant by all of this. So if we take a look at this website, at the top we have a list of sandwiches, and then as their backgrounds, there are images that basically represent the ingredients in the sandwiches. They're not my most perfect choice of images, but for demonstration purposes, they'll, they'll do the job just fine. And so on this website too, what we can do is we can go ahead and build another sandwich. Uh, we can go ahead and give it a name. So we can name, name my sandwich here and we can go ahead and select some ingredients and click save. I'll show you that in a little bit. But this is an example of the kind of relationship that we're going to be representing here within our database. And I'll show you now how that's built and then how to uh, actually query and insert these, these items uh, when they contain a multi-reference field. So let's come over first and take a look at our two collections. Like I said before, this is representing a relationship, in this case, a one-to-many relationship. So let's look at the one side first, which are our sandwiches. If we come over to our sandwiches here, what we can see is we have a title for the sandwich, we have a list of ingredients, and we also have a main ingredient. Don't really worry about that column for right now. What we care about is our ingredients column. What you'll notice here is that the ingredients obviously have more than one ingredient, and each of these items here this is showing the many side of the relationship, uh, represent a row in our other contents collection, the ingredients contents collection. So when we're defining these, what we would do when we're setting the properties is we would of course name our fields and we would set the field type as multi-reference. And then what you'll see is another dropdown will appear and you can choose which other contents collection you are referencing with this field. In this case, it will be the ingredients one. So I'll go ahead and click save. And those are our ingredients. And what you'll notice over on the ingredient side, now this is the side that represents the many, is we have one row for each of our ingredients. And so now we've tied these two things together. So our sandwich can, can contain ingredients and we can represent this in a really nice way. Uh, this is just a very useful way to represent it because if you were to imagine how you would do this without being able to do um, one-to-many type relationship with multi-reference fields, you would essentially do something like you would come into your sandwiches, uh, your sandwiches collection, and you know for Caprese sandwich, for example, we wouldn't just have one row that says Caprese sandwich. We might have a row that says Caprese sandwich ingredient bread. Caprese sandwich ingredient salt, Caprese sandwich ingredient pepper. And then we would have a bit more code where we would go ahead and look up all the, uh, all the rows that match the title Caprese sandwich. 
and then reconstruct it all. But in this way, we don't have to do all that additional work. We can just go ahead and define it all in one row and make sure too that if, that nothing needs to be repeatedly updated. You might, I might, for example, have maybe, maybe I misspelled the word mozzarella here. If I did misspell it, I wouldn't have to go and change it in every single case where it occurred. Uh, within my sandwiches when we have that, that broken out, uh, approach that I described. Instead, what we can do is I could just go into the ingredients, uh, and fix the typo if it existed. And that would mean that any sandwich here that had, uh, mozzarella, for example, if I just change this to call, be called cheese and we come back to sandwiches, what we'll see is that Every sandwich that contains mozzarella now contains cheese because we've we've changed the name of it. So these re these relationships are fairly powerful here. Addition similarly, uh, if I had broken this out and decided I didn't like the name Caprese sandwich anymore and I wanted to call it something else, I would have to update each row. Uh, there's just a lot more potential errors and issues there. So let's come back into ing ingredients and rename this to mozzarella and that's basically how this is all tied together so that's that's how you would that's how you would represent these things when dealing with the content collection now that they're in the content collection we need to go ahead and kind of and query that content be able to query that content collection and also be able to insert new rows into our sandwiches collection so query reference works pretty pretty simply and it works very similar to wix data.get if you've used .get you're basically doing a very similar operation here so what we would do here is i have this little function where i go to get ingredient images that of those of course are the images that go over here uh, that we go ahead and cycle through and then i just go ahead and i say wix data dot query referenced which is the command and then i want to query my content collection sandwiches i'm going to specify the item uh, or item id that's the row that this item is so for example when it's coming through here and say, oh, I need all the ingredient images for Caprese sandwich. That's what the item is. We're just basically passing in the item data uh, like we would with any other lookup or the item ID like you would when using Wix data.get. And that's how it's similar there. But then we need one additional bit of information to provide to this function, and that is the column. So the column, of course, in this case is going to be the ingredients column. Uh, right here because we're not getting this full row. We're basically saying, hey, I know which row I want. I actually have the row, but what I need now from that row is specifically the ingredients in that row. So that's what I did, did here in order to go ahead and get the results. And then the results just come out as results.items as normal. Um, and I've done a little bit of a fancy JavaScript here to go ahead and turn that into an array of images that I can use later. That part's not important, but that's how the rest of this here works. But then also, you know, we want to be able to insert our, our sandwiches. So let's actually go ahead and make a new sandwich first. And what's going to happen here when I make this sandwich is we're going to create a list of all the ingredients we want to put in. And then we're going to call a few things and insert. We're going to insert a sandwich row first. Uh, we're basically going to say, I'm going to call this one the Tony Supreme. We're going to go ahead and insert that row uh, without the references to the ingredients. And then after we've inserted the row, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, I want to insert a bunch of references into that row. And so I happen to really like anchovies. So I'm going to add anchovies. I'll add spinach, basil, uh, some olive oil, and let's say pepper and cheese or mozzarella. So I'll go ahead and click save. I've also just to note before I click save, I have slowed this, 
process down a bit. I've just inserted some time delays just so it doesn't fly by too quickly. So when you're actually implementing this, it will go much, much faster than what I'm showing here. So I'll click save. It's inserting that new sandwich row. Now it's inserting the multi-reference fields for the ingredients and it's all done. I probably should have added a little more time to that delay. And now we can see our sandwich is included up here and it has all the ingredients in it. And so how that worked on the back end is we went to, you know, do an insert reference. And what I'll show over here is kind of how that works. So let's, let's make this a little more clear so you can see. Uh, like I said before, and like you noticed, um, the progress bar increased a little bit and said inserting new row. And so that looks like any other regular row insert. I went to, I went and did Wix data.insert, said insert into sandwiches, and I gave it the sandwich I wanted to insert. And once that was done, um, I need to insert the reference as well. So I do that actually separately. And in order to do that, you know, F, I'll do insert and then I'll do dot then. I'll take this row and I'll go Wix data dot in, insert reference. I'll say, okay, I want to insert uh, again into the sandwich collection into the column ingredients, which represents our ingredient collection, but this is that column within the sandwiches. Uh, then I'll say into this row that I've just inserted and here's the list, the array of ingredients that I want to insert. And so that'll get inserted. Uh, we'll do some little cleanup stuff and that's basically it. Uh, and really that's, that's all there is to it. There are a few other things you can do with, with, uh, references with multi and multi-reference fields. You can go ahead and remove references, uh, if you need to remove them from, from a collection, uh, you can replace them if you need to change which references are made into a collect, are, are in a collection. And you can basically do all the general operations that you would, uh, as with other fields. And so, yeah, that's basically it. I hope you found this educational and I hope that you've kind of, that I've kind of helped you understand what multi-reference fields are, how to use them and all that fun stuff. Of course, if you have any questions, you know, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. You can come over and join our discord. Uh, you can post a question on our forum. We have lots of places where you can come and chat with us. So please don't be shy if there's anything in this video that you didn't understand or that you would like explained uh, better or differently. So yeah, thank you very much for joining and I hope to see you again next time. All right, bye.